uh, the, the awareness about GSM insecurity. Again, legal disclaimer, you know, don't try this with public networks. GSM operates on licensed frequencies. You're not supposed to be accessing those frequencies. Most countries have telecommunications privacy laws, which you're breaking if you do this on production networks. That's why we're building a test network here, so you can do all that legally. Um, you can obviously monitor, capture, analyze your own network, right? Um, and you have to if you operate your network. Um, so the software, again, is only for research purpose. What is airprobe.org? It's a platform for um, GSM protocol decoding software, um, including website, wiki, mailing list, um, Git repository, and so on. Um, it's formed by a bunch of people who first met at the THC um, GSM mailing list. Um, and the project is now hosted by the KS Computer Club. Um, what's the goal? Well, the goal basically is to produce an open source GSM protocol decoder um, using a software defined radio. Um, doing the layer one demodulation, protocol decoding. Oh, I'm getting, you know, fog. It's dramatic. Um, <laughs> ah, special effects. Um, has somebody hacked that machine? Can you, can you do this again? <laughs> um, yeah, so you do the layer one demultiplex, uh, demodulation, decode, uh, the TDMA demultiplex, recombining the bursts into MAC blocks and so on, all the low-level parts of the RF protocol, and then handing off the layer two MAC blocks into a protocol analyzer like Wireshark um, or you know, other protocol analyzers that you might write or you might have. Um, you know, the reason why people are doing so much security analysis and, and playing around with uh, TCP, IP, and Ethernet is that be simply because you, know, you can buy any random PC, even a whatever old PC, um, most likely these days it has an Ethernet board on the, on the main board itself, or you can put an Ethernet board inside, an Ethernet card inside your PC. And then that's basically everything you need to do to do Ethernet, TCP, IP-based uh, security analysis, protocol analysis. Um, everything else is software. You have an open source operating system where you can influence every aspect, how it talks to the Ethernet card. You have open source network protocol stack implementations where you can actually in intentionally, uh, well, intentionally, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, maybe somebody can close the door over there, please. Um, not sure. Well, the fresh air is actually not too bad an idea either, so I, I'll just continue to talk. If it's too noisy, please complain. Um, so <laughs> we're all going to die in here. OK, leave it open, leave it open, leave it open. Uh, you know. Did somebody say Jehovah in here? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so what? Sorry? I said, no, 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 nothing here. It's not, not my fault. Um, so anyway, handing it off into a product analyzer. So what's the reason that people cannot easily do this? It's, well, as I said, in the Ethernet world, you plug in an Ethernet board, you set it to promiscuous mode, you receive all the frames, you decode them in, in open source software, or you actually generate or receive them from open source software, and then um, you, can, uh, you can change the aspects of the protocol. You can send flags that are not meant to be set together. You, know, you remember the, the, the XMAS bits in the TCP header. You know, old stuff in the TCP IP world, but nobody has been doing it um, in, in GSM, at least not to any pu anyone's public knowledge. Um, so the GSM networks and other networks are just lacking all that, you know, that I would call it reliability testing. Um, you know, that, that other networks have experienced over the last uh, decades. Um, and the reason for this, you know, even with Wi-Fi, you can buy a Wi-Fi card and, you know, many of the cards or most of the cards today, you can switch in promiscuous mode, you can receive all the frames that you're getting. Um, you know, you have the entire protocol and software if you want, at least with a SoftMac a Wi-Fi card. Um, and, and, and you can, you know, you can start to play with that technology. But with GSM, the problem is that um, there is no real, you know, no real uh, free market of the equipment vendors, of the component vendors. 
if I want to uh, build a mobile phone or if I want to buy a digital baseband chip for GSM to do anything, uh, to build whatever, to build a protocol analyzer, to build a phone, to build a base transceiver station, the kind of chips that the market offers, the chips the semiconductor industry offers, they don't sell them to you. You know, you can tell them, oh, I want to buy this chip. No, nope. thanks, go away. Um, if you do not, you know, come to them and say, well, I will buy 10 millions per year, they will not be interested in you. And no matter what protocol analyzer you will design, you will never sell 10 million units per year of them, um, no matter how good it is. So um, you, you don't have access to the components that would give you the low-level access to the, the bit stream or the layer two of the GSM protocols. Every mobile phone has those protocols implemented, and they're implemented in proprietary software, and the proprietary software is typically you know, locked down, cryptographically signed, maybe encrypted, and it runs on hardware for which no single bit of public documentation exists. So even if you manage to you know, break the, the signature mechanism of your GSM baseband, like it was done for the iPhone unlocking and for many other projects that uh, uh, hack on mobile phones, um, you also still have to reverse engine, well, you, obviously you can disassemble the, the binary code and so on, which obviously you're not uh, allowed to do, but you can. Um, and maybe you can change something in there, but you have no understanding of how the hardware works because those vendors don't give their documentation to anyone. Even cell phone manufacturers rarely get the full documentations to the components they are using. You know, all they get is, well, you know, this is the electrical characteristics, this is how you connect it on your board, and then here is our software, and, you know, that's it. Um, they rarely get to understand the details of, of uh, the, the actual you know, DSP and its peripherals and how everything is interconnected and how the, the, the time processing works and so on. So this is a big problem if you want to do GSM security analysis. Again, you can read all those specifications and you can read all the scientific papers and then you can go to another scientific conference and you can say, well, based on what I read, there must be a problem, you know? And then you get applause for that, and then you go home, and, but nobody, it doesn't have any, in, it doesn't really have any impact, right? The impact will only start to exist if you can practically prove there is a problem, and you can demonstrate the problem. In order to demonstrate the problem practically, you need access to technology that gives you access to the bitstream, to the lower layers of the protocol. The nature of the industry surrounding GSM technology does not give you access to that technology, um, so you have to find a way around that. And one of the ways around that is basically uh, software-defined radio. And this is not only true for GSM, it is very much true for all the other communication protocols out there for which you cannot get low-level access. You know? um, even in your DSL modem, for example, you do not get access to the layer one and layer two that is spoken on the DSL line. This is all in some chip that does whatever magic, and you get some ATM, maybe ATM, but most likely only Ethernet frames out of that, and the, the lower layers are hidden from you. If you want to have lower level access, you again, you do not get documentation, you do not get access to the, the code or anything that, that uh, implements these protocols. And uh, yeah, the same is true for DEC, the same is true for many RFID systems and so on. So the universal solution to all these problems is software-defined radio, um, which is a modern technique where analog hardware uh, is replaced by software, and digital signal processing replaces analog electronics. Um, there are different variants for how you can do software-defined radio. Um, one of them is directly capturing the carrier frequency using an extremely high-speed analog digital converter which is very expensive, and you can only use it for relatively low carrier frequencies. So it's not a practical option yet. In a couple of years, it's probably much more practical. Um, what's more practical is you down-convert the, the RF signal. So let's say you have a 900 megahertz GSM signal. You use an analog down-converter. You multiply. You do an analog down-converter to transform that to, let's say, 10 megahertz. And then the 10 megahertz you feed into an analog digital converter. And from there, you take it and you do mathematics, digital signal processing math, to uh, decode and to synchronize. And